Hi, I'm Kate Campbell Stevenson, and I'm thrilled to be the host of this new program, Her Story. Women's history has been a big part of my life and has been inspiring me uh, through the years. I've learned from these tremendous women who have broken through barriers and obstacles who've come before us, and I would love to share those stories with you so we can learn together and be inspired about how we can really educate and help everybody understand that women's stories are important and that they're a part of our history and we need to be bringing her story to history to tell our story because we are all together in this. Today we'll be featuring Dr. Charlene Mickens Dukes. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome again, this is Charlene Mickens Dukes, one of my favorite people for a very long time and she's being honored to be inducted into the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Well thank you so much. I'm just absolutely delighted to be here. I am honored, I'm humbled. I think this is just amazing and to think that there is something I've done to be sitting here next to you is just awesome. Yeah, well you are awesome and I think we just were talking about how you are working on the State Board of Education, yes. which is preschool through 12th grade, and as well as uh, at the community college, Prince George's Community College. So you're at all levels. Let me just interrupt for a minute to say that you're hearing all that noise behind us. This is These are the crowds gathering for the induction into the Hall of Fame. We want to explain to those watching the video that it isn't just that we're being unruly. All right. Okay. All right. Well, it, uh, it's amazing because I have been at Prince George's Community College since 1995. I, I came to Maryland as Vice President for Student Services and just about uh, almost six years ago and on July 1 of 2007, I was appointed as President of the college where we serve 44,000 students and uh, those students are doing great things all over the county, the region, and certainly the nation. Great. And uh, then I've had the pleasure of serving on the State Board of Education. Uh, gubernatorial appointment, Governor O'Malley appointed me in 2007. And uh, just this past July, I was elected president of the State Board after, her, after having served as vice president for probably just about three terms. Mm -hmm. So you have a unique uh, hat in being two presidents at once. And, and you know, it's, it's amazing because with the State Board of Education, we are through policy and regulation having the opportunity to touch the lives of almost one million children enrolled in Maryland's public schools. And as you know, it's all about education reform and change and how we support students. Absolutely. Tell me, is there anything that you can point to in your early life? What led you to do this kind of work and why did it matter to you? Well, I, I, I believe and um, it has always been my mantra that what led me here was coming from a family of service. And uh, my parents were always about service and doing good work in the community. I have eight brothers and sisters and uh, we were raised uh, to do that, living next door to our grandparents, our aunts and our uncles. And uh, even today, my uh, mom and dad are always concerned about doing good for others and not necessarily concerned about having others do good for them. Mm, that sounds wonderful. What do you feel most proud of? Well, um, I uh, tell this story often. My father graduated from high school and he wanted to be an architect. But at the time he graduated in the early 1940s, he was told that because he was good with his hands, he should pursue carpentry. My mom uh, received her GED, her uh, General Equivalency Diploma, when I was probably in the eighth or ninth grade because I can remember sitting at the table and all of us helping her study. And for me, it was the opportunity that was provided through the civil rights uh, movement, uh, colleges and universities opening up to all types of students. And I always felt that I, I had this driving me to do things that my parents couldn't do, but that they paved the way for us to do as their offspring. So that's what drives me. I have a son and I hope that I'm serving in a way that when he looks back on his life, 
that he can take what I have tried to teach him and what his father has tried to teach him and do good things for people. That's wonderful. Speaking of that and about your son and the next generation coming up, is there anything that you, on a personal level, like to share and leave as a legacy to, to say to those young people as a message? Well, you know, I think that we all uh, have dreams and visions, and sometimes we don't necessarily accomplish those by moving down a straight and narrow road. Sometimes we have to turn left, sometimes we have to turn right. But you know, we get right back on that road, and we don't let anyone deter us from what we know in our heart is our life's work. And that's what I've tried to do as I've moved through my journey. I didn't always want to be a college president. Quite frankly, I wanted to teach English in high school, and I wanted to teach grammar. Uh, but I started working in higher education, and for me, I found a niche, not just in higher education, but in community colleges when you talk about access and opportunity for those who are underserved or underrepresented, and that's what's been important to me. That's wonderful and important, and we hope that a lot of younger generation coming up will heed that message and work on those things and not be deterred. Exactly. We have a, I think we have both a right and an obligation to help and support, to mentor, to guide and advise. That is a beautiful capsule. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you, again. Jill. Next, I will welcome Aretha Bridgewater Sims to the podium to introduce her nominee, Dr. Charlene Nickens Dukes. Dr. Duke's signature is here. I told him that I'm doing this, but that he could say congratulations. <laughs> Hold up, Senator Peters. <laughs> it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce the eighth and the first female president of Prince George's Community College. Dr. Charlene Dukes. Under Dr. Dukes' leadership, Prince George's Community College was the only one in the state of Maryland and was the one of 16 community colleges to be named by the White House as the champion for change. And this is the 16th. College established a partnership with the Prince George's County Public Schools in the creation of what we call a middle <coughs> college. It's known as the <coughs> Academy of Health Sciences. This is the first such program in the state of Maryland which enables dual high school and college enrollment for ninth graders and at the end, upon graduation, they will receive a high school diploma as well as an associate degree. <laughs> President Barack Obama visited Prince George's Community College in March 2012. And after he was introduced to the crowd, and also, he was introduced to Dr. Dukes. He announced to the crowd, I have just met the real president, <laughs> Dr. Charlie Dukes. <laughs> From 2002 through 2006, she served on the appointed Board of Education of Prince George's County. In 2007, she accepted an appointment from Governor Martin O'Malley to serve on the Maryland State Board of Education, and now she is the president. Mm -hmm. In October 2007, the African American Alumni Council of the University of Pittsburgh recognized Dr. Dutz as an outstanding alumnus. And in 2008, she received the Distinguished Alumnus Award from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And now I am especially proud 
to introduce to you someone that the Washingtonian magazine called one of the hundred most powerful women in the Washington metropolitan area, Dr. Duke. talk <laughs> and you know like college presidents do we just bring out pieces of Xerox paper <laughs> bullets on them but yes yes I, I certainly do want to thank you all this is such an honor and a pleasure and it is not because of the work that I do it is really because of all of the people who are with me and beside me at Prince George's Community College and at the Maryland State Board of Education and the Maryland State Department of Education so I'd like to start off by just acknowledging a few people. I have with me today my classmates from Leadership Greater Washington, so thank you all for being here. We had class today and we all left early. Uh, members of the Maryland State Board of Education and the State Superintendent, Dr. Lillian Lowry. what I believe is the greatest sorority in the world, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. My good friends, and they know who they are because they've been with us from the time we moved to Maryland in 1995, and their families helped to ensure that my son, Maurice, while we were working, was uh, well fed and well taken care of. So Carol and Gail, you know who you are, and thank you for that. Uh, Prince George's Community College, my colleagues who are here today working with me to serve 44,000 students, a predominantly black institution that is very much committed to access, opportunity, and success. The members of the Board of Trustees who lead and guide me and work with me every day, and thank you to the board members are here, who are here and my co-workers. I have a few co-workers in the room as well. And then I have my family my brothers and my sisters and their families and i'm just going to ask them to stand so you'll know who they are my brothers and my sisters you all know who you are <laughs> and um, my mom and dad uh, would have been here today but my dad is ill and was rushed to the hospital and after almost 60 years of marriage my mom was just insistent that she wasn't going to leave him, but she made sure that my son is over there videotaping all of this. So I would introduce you all to who has, uh, since my husband and his father passed away, has become the uh, probably second love of my life, and that's my son, Maurice Dukes. And then I'd like to thank the Maryland Women's Commission and for me, most importantly, the Prince George's County Women's Commission, because I know that I wouldn't be standing here if it were not for all of you, your belief in me and your belief that in some way that I've made a contribution, not just to Prince George's County, but to the state of Maryland. So thank you so much. You know, I'm really honored and humbled and just in awe at receiving this record this recognition because I believe that all that I am and all that I can be is because of my faith, my family, and my commitment to serve. And I'm just going to leave you with a very short story. We come from humble beginnings, and I, I tell this story often. Uh, I really didn't even know what it meant to sleep in your own bed until I went to college. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm not going to call her out, but my youngest sister, uh, we shared a bed from almost the time that she was born. And when I went away to college and I got in that single bed, because I went to college at times when they had single beds, not the kind of luxury living that, that young people have today, I remember rolling over and over and over and just touching the wall and not another warm body, and I didn't really know how to react to that, but it felt good, I would tell you that. But what I recall is that when my dad was growing up and he graduated from high school and he wanted to be an architect, and he was told because it was the early 1940s that probably the best he could do because he was good with his hands was to be a carpenter. 
and that uh, he was directed and moved uh, to do that kind of work. Uh, my mom did not graduate from high school, but I remember sitting around the table when we were, I was probably in the eighth or ninth grade, and we all helped her as she studied for her GED. And then she actually received that GED as a person at the top of the class. And that was important to us because what it said to us, and my dad, I will tell you, I don't ever recall him working less than three jobs. Now, I have eight brothers and sisters, and there's probably a reason for that because there were a lot of people to feed. And every Sunday, I can recall when he would take us to a, a small ice cream place called All Wines. It was an ice cream store, and uh, it was inexpensive enough that all nine of us could get our own ice cream cone, and that was a good thing. It was also during a time that, thank goodness, there was no seatbelt law because none of us would have ever been able to all fit in a car at one time. But he would do that to give my mom uh, a break so she could enjoy a few hours on Sunday afternoon to herself or with her friends. And as we would return home, he would sit outside of the steel mill and those of you who are from Johnstown, Pennsylvania or from Western PA, you know that we were riddled with steel mills all up and down the Ohio, Monongahela and uh, Allegheny rivers. And he would say, I work here every day so none of you will ever have to. And I think that that's something that quite frankly has carried all of us through, that it is our commitment to live the dreams of our, our, our parents, our mom and dad. And then every night, I remember they would come into the room and he would say, we would say the Lord's Prayer in unison, and then he would stop and he'd say, what's the family motto? And the family motto was all for one and one for all. And that's the way we live our lives today. So thank you all so very much for anything that I could do here in Maryland. It's because it's all for one and one for all. Thank you. Presenting tonight uh, to our executive director, Jill Greenberg, the plaque that will be a part of history to acknowledge your induction into the Hall of Fame. Again, congratulations. We cannot be more proud of the women who were inducted this evening. Thank you all. Thank you so much. was here. Okay. Um, the president of the Maryland Women's Heritage Center is Frances Hughes Glendenny, and uh, she was here, so I did want to acknowledge her have her come up. This piece of lovely names was all that the Women's Hall of Fame existed as until the Women's Heritage Center opened. Each year, the Maryland Law Library was kind enough to have put the names of the group for that year onto a wooden <coughs> placard and add the names for each year. And that was what it consisted of, the Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, now that with so much support from so many of you and your organizations and individuals, we've actually been able to open the Maryland Women's Heritage Center, the first of its kind in the country, and we have to credit, really, the Maryland Commission for Women, which is in DHR, where Secretary Dallas is, the Maryland Department of Planning, and the Maryland State Department of Education for all of their support to help that move forward. And we have to reemphasize, too, that the Hall of Fame that opened in 1985 was a joint effort of the Maryland Commission for Women and the women legislators of Maryland a joint collaboration and that's really important because sometimes the collaboration isn't always clear and the commission does do a huge amount of work which we know wonderfully um, some slides are going on behind me and i'll just talk for uh, a little bit about each one and what oh well i'll start at the beginning which is wonderful um, 
What's so special about the people who are inducted tonight and who are in the Hall of Fame already is that while there's tremendous role models and advocates for women, they, the work that they've done and accomplished are not just for women. They affect our, our state, they affect our country, they affect our world. These are efforts and endeavors with refugees, with Ellen Sauerbrey, who aren't just girl refugees, um, the people that each, each of these um, people have worked on impacts on every woman, man, girl, and boy in our state and has impact on the country and the world. For a little tiny state, we have had a huge impact. And when you look at the names in your program of people who've been inducted into the Hall of Fame, you see what illustrious company these women tonight are joining. And we hope you'll continue to be supportive in their honor and for future inductees. Um, we'll start from the beginning, Ellie, and I'm just very quickly. In 15 seconds, we have opening. We opened in June of 2010, exactly 100 years after a major suffrage rally was at exactly the corner where we have our temporary home. 100 years to the month. Our motto is adding her story to his story to tell our story. It's about all of us. It's adding the part that's been missing. That's the window of the Heritage Center. You see Katie O'Malley there, Connie Morella, Helen Bentley at the opening. Here is where we're moving from a plaque to an exhibit. And we have two of our first ladies um, showing the plaque and then where we're going from for the exhibit at the Heritage Center. Um, I don't know how long these are. Okay. We created a women's history tour of Baltimore and Annapolis, and those of you who know, the first woman mayor of Annapolis, Ellen Moyer, was our tour guide on the trolley of the women's history tour of Annapolis, and we also created one in Baltimore. The very first national town hall on women's history with Secretary of the, Ken Salazar, the U.S. Secretary of the Interior, was held at the Maryland Women's Heritage Center. Secretary Salazar chose our center from the whole country. Each year, um, we have programs focusing on women in the arts, and Ellie is very instrumental in those things happening. And you can, again, see the diversity, and you can see um, Loretta Gubernatis and Luke Gubernatis, who are, account for all of our wonderful videos. Then we work on partnership with the women at NASA Goddard, and I saw at least one who actually is an astronaut who came from NASA Goddard tonight. Are you still here, Mary? Yes, I am. Yeah? <laughs> okay. We <laughs> made a poster series of six posters on women in the aerospace industries in every field from education to bi biologist, to every, and a, a set of six posters and a book about the women of Goddard. And with NASA support and collaboration, we were able to get that and those role models to every single middle school, high school, and would be for all the community colleges in the state of Maryland. The International Day of the Girl, the first International Day of the Girl was observed at the center. A lot of young women from Maryland got, were instrumental in getting the United Nations to declare the first International Day of the Girl. Uh, you can see the 40th anniversary of Title IX was this year. Bunny Sandler, the white-haired woman here, who um, some of you were here when she was inducted into the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame two years ago. We just learned last week that she is going to be inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca Falls, New York. This year. So we have about Maryland women there. And then we work with communities and groups around the state, not just at the center. Um, I know Addie Eckert was here. We work on the Eastern Shore on, about um, teaching about the legacy of Anna Ella Carroll. Everyone knows about Harriet Tubman. Anna Ella Carroll was from the same county. And I don't know what it was about Dorchester County, but they sure got women leaders out way back in the time of the Civil War. The last slide that you saw which is very exciting, is because we know that our Maryland Women's Heritage Center and Museum is a model for the rest of the country and other places. Um, people who are on the board and the committees, would you just raise your hands? Carmen, Delgado, Vote, I see you over there. Harriet, Linda, Linda, all of you, Rhonda. 
thank you for all this tremendous work. We got called last week from the state of Georgia that wants to follow our model and try and create a Women's Heritage Center for the state of Georgia. And the very last slide that Ellie showed, she put up one more time, did you see the women in their saris? Yeah. We have many international visitors. One of the women went back to India and opened a sister center to the Maryland Women's Heritage Center in Hoshore, India. You see the opening uh, of the center. They're all there in their saris. And they've named, this is a public official in her sari and they opened the Women's Heritage Center in Hoshore, India to encourage the girls, and you know how difficult it is for girls to get an adequate education in that part of the world, but we now have exported our model and they've named it Shresti, which means the best of everything. And that's what we want to wish to our wonderful inductees tonight and to all of you, thank you. Thank you for joining us and learning about Dr. Charlene Mickens Dukes. Remember our motto, adding her story to history to make our story. We want to hear from you. How did you like these stories? Do you have some feedback? Uh, tell us about some women that you'd like to see featured. Share the link with your friends and, and tell them about our programs. Spread the word.